A face cream for acne prone skin. Let's make it. We are gonna jump right into the making. And this kind of video is just gonna be a relaxed chit chat with me while I make this face cream and talk about the ingredients and the process. So if that is something that you're interested in, then keep watching. I'm just trying to organize myself here. What we are gonna be making today is a cream that mixes oil and water and other ingredients. So the first thing we're going to do is combine those water ingredients. So let's go ahead and measure that out. I'm using a distilled water. When I was a teenager, I struggled hardcore with acne. It was so bad that my parents sent me to a doctor for it and they prescribed all sorts of things to help clear my acne, but what helped, the only thing that truly worked was birth control. And that's what kept my skin clear for a long time after that. All right, there's my distilled water. And the next ingredient I'm going to add is glycerin, which I'm gonna get off screen because it's over there and in a big container. So let me go and grab that. So I've just added my glycerin and that's pretty much it for the water phase of our ingredients. I'm gonna set this aside and then we're gonna to start to measure out our oil phase ingredients. But actually before we do that, I'm going to tear the scale and see how much this whole thing weighs because what we're going to be doing later is re-adding back the evaporated water. So let me go and note this down. Perfect. So we're just gonna put that down here. Like I mentioned, this is a cream. So we need an ingredient that'll combine both the water and the oil ingredients together. And that's where an emulsifier comes in. So for this cream, I'm using all of them 1000, which is a great eco cert emulsifier. You can use different emulsifiers for this, but I really like the consistency that all of M1000 gives my emulsions. It's like a cushy, very light, fast absorbing. I really like this emulsifier in particular because it's non-comedogenic. It's considered more natural than other emulsifiers, so it's really gentle for your skin. To help with the emulsification and also add some body, we're adding some cetyl alcohol and glycerol stearate, SC. So my skin was clear for quite some time when I was on birth control, all throughout my early 20s. Then I got married to Kale, and we were trying to start a family, so I couldn't be on birth control anymore, so I stopped birth control, and that really made my skin super angry. And then I entered into the horrific world of adult cystic acne. It was so bad. <laughs> I remember looking at my face at the time thinking, what is going on? Because I'd never experienced that, even when my skin was super bad as a teenager. It was big, painful acne that was sitting underneath my skin. So there wasn't anything I could do topically to help it. It was all things that I needed to do on the inside of my body. I did, however, have to make the switch to more gentler face moisturizers so that I don't make the problem even worse. And using a moisturizer on your face that has mainly non-comedogenic ingredients is a huge help when it comes to acne prone skin. And this lotion has all non-comedogenic ingredients in it. So that was a glycerol stearate and the acetyl alcohol. Now we're gonna add some ingredients to make this really moisturizing because in the winter time, it can get super cold, the air is really dry, and that can really wreak havoc on your skin. So we're gonna be adding some squalene, which is deeply, deeply moisturizing and also feels really nice on the skin. Squalene is also EcoCert approved. So that is awesome. Next, we're gonna add a really luxurious oil, which I don't use enough of, but have been trying to, and that is jojoba oil. It's very light and soft, and whenever I use it in skincare, my skin always feels amazing. And jojoba oil is also non-comedogenic, which is awesome. It won't clog your pores. One ingredient that you definitely don't wanna be using in face skincare is coconut oil, because that is a comedogenic ingredient and will clog your pores. It's also really drying. And it's hard to imagine uh, an oil as drying, but yeah, coconut oil is not great if you want to have nice, clear face skin. Next, we're using some beautiful shea butter. And this is from Baraka Shea, or is it Baraka Company? I have a link to them down below. Although shea butter is nice, thick and creamy and pretty solid at room temperature, it actually is non-comedogenic as well. So it's great in face skin care. Next, we're gonna add some watermelon oil, and this is a beautiful non-comedogenic oil that 
has so many good properties. It does not smell like watermelon, unfortunately, although that would be really cool. So that wraps up all of my oil phase ingredients. And what we're going to do now is melt this down and heat up both phases so that they reach above 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And once they get to that temperature, we're gonna keep them at that temperature by keeping them on the heat for an additional 20 minutes. And then once they are done doing that, then I'll come back and we'll move on to the next stage of this face cream process. So that was what I was dealing with in my late 20s. My skin was just so angry and breaking out like crazy. So I had to figure out a whole new skincare routine. I looked up ways to change my diet because of how deep the cysts were. It was definitely something inside of me. It wasn't stuff that I was doing to my face. It was all my body doing it. And at the time, Kayla and I were living in a town called Midland where there were a lot of pizza places and that's what we were eating a lot of the time because we were so busy and my diet was so bad because we were eating a lot of pizza, we were drinking a lot of beer, and I think that definitely was not helpful for my face. And another huge factor, which I don't think a lot of people think about, was stress. At the time, I was selling a lot of my soap in farmer's markets, I had wholesale customers, I had an Etsy that was doing really well, I was getting so many orders on that Etsy, and I was just so busy. I was stretching myself so, so thin. And even though I was making a lot of money, my business was finally making really good money, I was the most stressed out and the most miserable I'd ever been since I started making soap as a business. It was just crazy. And you'll be surprised how much stress can really affect your body and your health and your skin. And it definitely was manifesting all over my face, which is weird because at the time I thought I was living my dream. I was finally getting to make soap full time for a living, but it was turning into such a nightmare because I was so stressed out and my skin was reacting so bad. That was definitely one of the things that told me that I was doing way too much and this was not how I wanted to run my business at all. I have since cut down a lot on the amount of things that I do in my small soap business and that has improved not just my mental health, but it has improved the quality of the things that I decided to put my focus towards. It was a tough lesson to learn, but I cannot do it all. And I didn't want to hire people to keep going at that pace. I just wanted a simpler life where I was making soap for money, but I wasn't miserable doing it. It's funny because when you first start, you think that's what you want. You want the orders to be rolling in. You want to be super busy, but then when you're in it, you start to realize, wow, I am not cut out for this type of business model. Some people are, and some people thrive under that kind of pressure. No, that was not for me. I no longer do any farmer's markets or in-person events, and I also don't do wholesale orders anymore. I'm not closing the door on those two income streams, but for now, if I do do them, it'll be at a very limited capacity, nowhere near the amount that I was doing back then because I was doing, what was it, four farmer's markets in one week. And although Kale was the one attending these markets, I was still having to be the one to pump out that product. And it was a lot of production for me, for one person. And again, there's that argument, well, you should have hired people or you should have thrown money at it and maybe hired or rented out a facility to start producing and hired staff. And I'm, I'm just not cut out for that. And that's another thing that you might realize along your soap making business journey is that everyone's business looks differently and it doesn't always have to look like a million packages like above like a pile of them, which I've seen. <laughs> it could be as simple or as complicated as you want and you can earn as little or as much as you want and put as much or as little effort towards your soap business as you want. That's the whole beauty of being a soap business owner is it can be tailored to you and your needs. So don't feel like that you're not successful because you don't have a ton of orders coming in. If you look at your numbers, you might be making good money that you could live off of and you might not want to do much more than that. And that's okay. <laughs> okay. We are back and I have just re-added the evaporated water to my water phase and we are ready to start mixing things together. 
And what we're going to do is pour the oil phase into the water phase. So the way we're gonna blend everything together is we're going to at first use a stick blender and then we're going to switch to a hand mixer and just slowly add my oils. Okay, so I've been blending that for about three minutes. I'm going to switch over to a hand mixer to continue mixing it. And you might notice on this channel that I have different mixing techniques, but that all depends on the type of emulsifier that you're using. So if you're going to not use, for example, all of them 1000, say you're gonna use Polo Wax or Read Emulse, any different emulsifier, you really wanna do your research on how to use that emulsifier because they all have little things about them that make them not exact swaps for one another. So that's something that you definitely want to do your research up on. After five minutes of mixing with a hand mixer, you get this beautiful, consistency. It's a very light, almost mousse-like consistency. And because I've been hand mixing it for so long, it's actually cool enough to add my cool down ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's just such gorgeous lotion consistency. It's really different. It's like very cloud-like. Yeah, mousse is probably the best term for it. So we're gonna set this aside. Work on our cool down ingredients, our lovely extra ingredients. And the only thing necessary in the next set of ingredients is a preservative and the white willow bark extract. If you want to formulate it for acne prone skin, the preservative that I'm using today is liquid germal plus. And you want to add this to extend the shelf life of your cream. And to complement the watermelon oil, we're also going to add some watermelon extract, and this is from Brambleberry. And here is the white willow bark extract, also EcoCert approved. We're just going to add a little bit of it. White willow bark is actually also known as a pain reliever and an anti-inflammatory. You can find it in some headache medicine. Willow bark has been used in holistic medicine for centuries. We're gonna add some vitamin E, again, to help with hydration and repairing any dried skin that might've been damaged because of the cold. Is that everything? Oh, and then the last thing I'm gonna add is panthenol. You'll recognize panthenol as an ingredient used in a lot of hair care. It makes hair shiny and smooth, but it's also a really great skincare ingredient because it has the same effects for skin. Now I'm gonna add these ingredients to the rest of my lotion, Then I'm going to use my stick blender to get all of those ingredients incorporated. So now that I was able to get those clumps smoothed out by my stick blender, I'm gonna hand mix the rest of those cool down ingredients into the rest of my cream. And here is that gorgeous consistency that you will be working with and seeing once everything is mixed together. It is an absolutely gorgeously smooth, fluffy cream. We're not going to jar it just yet. We're going to set it aside um, without a cover to allow any excess water to evaporate out of it. And that way, when we do jar it, the water is not going to evaporate and rain back down onto the cream, which can contaminate the cream and cause it to spoil sooner than we want it to. That is just a beautiful cream. How gorgeous is that? And you will get a light tan color from the white willow bark. And this cream is unscented. I normally don't like to use any sort of fragrance oil in my face care products. I might use a little bit of essential oil for a wash off product, but for leave on creams that go on my face, 
I like to keep that fragrance free. And what you also wanna do is to pH test this lotion to make sure it falls within the correct pH range because you don't wanna cause damage to your skin. There are some really great videos on how to test for pH. I learned how to do that from Tara Lee, whose channel is amazing. I really, really look up to her as a YouTube channel and as a skincare formulator. She has an entire video on the whole pH testing process, which I will link down below if you're curious about that. So I'm going to let this sit for a few hours, let that extra water evaporate, and then we can go ahead and jar them. Hey guys, we are back. It is quite a bit later, and here is the consistency of the cream. And you can see that it thickened up quite a bit. And that consistency is just so luxurious. And it's so lovely. And that white willow bark gave it this really nice tan color. And now all that there is left to do is to jar this cream. I'm gonna be jarring this cream in a four ounce PET jar. To make things easy and quick, I will be piping that cream into the jars. And this was a great suggestion that a lot of my viewers gave to me when they saw me struggling spooning cream into jars in other videos, so thank you for that. Look how thick and luxurious this turned out. I find it really amazing how skincare changes along with you as you get older. For example, now that I'm in my 30s, I'm using products with retinol. Have you seen that report about 10 year olds going into Sephora and ruining all of the skincare there because they're now into skincare at 10 years old, which is way earlier than I really think they need to be concerned about anything. <laughs> when I was 10 years old, I, I don't think I even used any moisturizer, but Oh, times are changing. And I think with every decade, your skin's needs are going to keep changing. It's, so it's good to pay attention to new products that are coming out there, because not only do the products change, but the information out there changes too. One of the most popular exfoliating skin products was that St. Ives apricot scrub. And then now that product is just so vilified. People think it's terrible for your skin because it's actually super abrasive and creates micro tears. It's good to be informed and to know as much as you can about skincare so that you can keep your skin looking the best that it can be. To be honest with you, I don't just use this face cream on my face. I use other products that I don't feel confident formulating at home because the ingredients that they use, it's so hard to stabilize them. And so that when you put them into a product, that product is actually doing what that ingredient is supposed to do. It's hard to do that from a home-based, um, what do you call this? Hard to DIY that, which is why I leave it to experts in control the labs to, to make those kinds of products. Like for example, anything with retinol in it, I wouldn't trust myself to make good products out of. I hear vitamin C is also extremely unstable. You know, things like that, I just wouldn't, wouldn't even attempt. So here is my cream bag. So we are going to just pipe the lotion into the jars. So that's super quick. Oh, it looks so luxurious. How many jars am I gonna get out of this? I think I might be able to get four. Let's see, or three and three and three quarters. Here is the final cream. So fluffy and soft. I'll give you a little bit of a demo with my half full guy. This is a really excellent face cream. It's going to provide a lot of great hydration while not clogging your pores, but it is also a really great body cream if you have super dry patches like I do. I suffer from psoriasis. So you can use this cream as kind of a spot treatment for those areas since it has such nice anti-inflammatory ingredients in here as well. So it can be quite soothing to put on sensitive skin spots like my psoriasis patches. Let me grab a little bit of the cream, this much. I'm just gonna put it over here and then smooth it in. and it has such a quick rate of absorption. 
and it leaves skin feeling smooth and dewy and hydrated and soft so that you can face a cold wintry day and not have chapped feeling rough skin <laughs> pretty much if you want the full recipe along with the steps for this amazing face cream then you can find that on my patreon and speaking of my patreon thank you to all of my patrons and everyone who chooses to support me on there especially these guys my bubble bffs i appreciate you guys so much your support and generosity just mean the world to me thank you so that is it for today i really hope you enjoyed making with me and chit chatting with me if you want to see more then i highly suggest that you hit that subscribe button because we have more projects coming. I'm really excited about February, which is just around the corner. And I think you guys are gonna like what I have in store. But until that next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome. And I will see you in that next video. Bye guys.